Welcome back everyone to Between Bells on Cheddar. An Illinois state representative wants to ban Grand Theft Auto and other violent video games by imposing a $1,000 fine to those that sell or rent a violent video game to minors. The legislator looks to do this in hopes of reducing crime in the state. So joining us now is that representative, Representative Marcus Evans Jr. of Illinois. Representative, good to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your views on this. Uh, I want to talk about the 2012 law that's already really on the books already. It essentially keeps retailers from selling certain violent video games to minors. Uh, I guess, why do you think that the state needs much more than that? Okay, the, the question is, you know, uh, we have to ask ourselves, where are we in society? We have a huge issue here uh, in some cities and some towns with carjacking. And I think that steps are being taken to address carjacking and the overall acceptance of this behavior uh, in a lot of different ways. What can we do? So uh, thinking about the influences on some young people potentially, you know, I, I found this bill as an idea. Uh, to kind of get us thinking about ways to curb this terrible, terrible deviant behavior of carjacking. Yeah, you mentioned carjacking, a lot of other violent crime also increasing in Chicago as well. It, it could stem from a, a various amount of different problems. I, I guess, why the attention on video games? Yeah, the attention is not just on video games. I think the video game community, which is a great community, is a community I'm a part of. I'm 36 years old. I grew up playing video games and every iteration of Grand Theft Auto and any other violent games uh, has not had an impact on me, clearly, right? I'm a productive citizen. But the question is, does it have an impact on some folks, folks with mental illness? Does it have an impact on impressionable folks? I don't have the answer to that. Part of filing the bill was to examine that. Do these games have an effect? If they don't have an effect, great. Again, they did not have an effect on me. I had a family and a mom and folks who, who taught me right from wrong, and I enjoyed these games as what they are, entertainment. We don't want to censor all entertainment. But we do censor entertainment. We don't have games, uh, slavery games. We don't have anti-Semitic games. We don't have dog fighting games. So we do have censorship in society. The question is picking the right ones and, and ensuring that uh, we're making it clear that carjacking is wrong. And I want to send a message that we must stop this carjacking. And again, this was at the very least an opportunity for a conversation. Absolutely. And, and I, I'm really happy at least we're having this conversation because I, I remember back when I was young uh, during the yeah. Tipper Gore days, the parental advisory labels that they put on CDs back in the day. And I remember almost thinking like I, I robbed a bank by having one of those CDs. Yeah. I thought, oh, my yeah. God, how do I have this? I feel like I'm not supposed to have this. You know, a lot of critics would say, listen, there's uh, from the American Psychological Association would say that there's not that much of a casual link between video games. A lot of it might be hereditary things that they're seeing yeah. in the house as well. What's your response to that? Again, and it may be correct for the most part. You know, everybody takes in information differently. I know when I'm working out, I like to listen to rap music. And when I'm relaxing, I listen to jazz music. I mean, it's for a reason. These things have impacts. Uh, analyzing what impact that is, and it may be none. But when you file an idea, I think the point is to, to have discussions. We want to be clear that this behavior is unacceptable. We have a rash of carjacking. We got young folks that are, again, as young as 12 and 13 years old, uh, participating in terrible, reckless behavior. We want to send a message to them that it's wrong. Uh, but of course, I, I believe in the First Amendment rights and I believe in enjoyment and recreation. We just said at times we can assess and make sure that our enjoyment and recreation is sending the right message. And that was the point of this bill. And uh, I'm listening to all the folks. I mean, I've talked to people across the world about this issue. Uh, and I think that it's, uh, it's worth the discussion and the worth the analyze situation. Again, I'm 36 years old. I'm at a point in my life where yeah, I'm a full-fledged adult. 20 years ago, I had a different view of these things and the impact. And, and I think we should discuss that. The gaming community is older now. Just think about us. I mean, we grew up with some of these things. And now it's, it's, it's looking back and saying, you know, are we at a good place? And just assessing where we are in gaming. Gaming is no longer something that people do. Gaming is a part of society. And I think it needs to take a greater role in uh, just the overall improvement in society, particularly my community of Chicago. Uh, we have women and seniors who are really afraid, and I don't want in any way to trivialize uh, the terror that's going on with carjacking. No, absolutely. And again, I, I'm, I'm glad we're at least having the conversation. Um, you know, it's interesting because a lot of kids now are streaming a lot of the video games now. Is this a conversation maybe to have with a lot of the streamers in the sense that maybe they're able to sort of either edit or change certain parts of the game to make sure that a lot of the more violent parts that are in the game are no longer there? Yeah, again, whether it's edit, whether it's clear communication that this is entertainment, you know, I think uh, ensuring that we don't skew the line. 
Because again, think about our generation. If you're under 40, video games and, and, and a lot of this imagery and the technology have been a part of your life. And we want to ensure that it is not skewed with reality. That if you choose to carjack, you know, we will go after you to the full extent of the law. That it is a terrorizing crime of financial uh, distress. It is a terrorizing crime for the women and children and seniors of my community. But if you want to enjoy a violent video game that lets you live in, in, a, in a false reality, lets you live in a fantasy land, that's okay. Because we've all understood that, the majority of us. But if there's a segment of folks that don't understand it, it has to be clear. And I think uh, the gaming business community should join in to ensuring that, uh, yes, we want people to enjoy themselves. I'm not a, a basketball player, but I want to play some 2K. I want to play Madden. <laughs> I want to play these games. I want, I'm not a, a soldier either. But if I want to you know, go inside of a video game and, and experience that, it should be okay. But we should also, I think we also have a responsibility for the real society. And the gaming community should join in to help uh, the, the city of Chicago. Well, I really appreciate you coming on, sir, and, and telling us your views on all of this. That's Illinois State Representative Marcus Evans, Jr. Thank you, sir, for joining us.